November 2009. Two hackers have just completed the development of the most infamous banking trojan of all time that would become responsible for one of the largest robberies in history. A piece of malware that over a period of three years was used to steal $1 billion from 253 financial institutions and infect more than 60 million computers worldwide, causing immeasurable financial losses to individuals and irreparable damage to the financial industry, earning the two masterminds Alexander Panin and Hamza Bendelaj, a spot on the FBI's most wanted list. Together they created a lucrative business model by selling their banking trojan, known as SpyEye, to over 150 cybercrime organizations. Until one day, they would sell the trojan online to the wrong customer, an undercover FBI agent, sparking an international manhunt involving over 20 countries that would end with a terrified populace, thousands of victims, and more questions than answers. This is the Billion Dollar Heist. Alexander Panin was born in 1989 in Russia, just two years before the collapse of the Soviet Union. His family struggled to make ends meet, despite him being a gifted software developer that had just graduated with a degree in computer science from Kanyayev College. In 2010, when Alex was just 21 years old, he created SpyEye, a new piece of malware that quickly made a name for itself across hacker forums. One of those forums was a website named Darkcode, an underground marketplace for cyber criminals. SpyEye quickly gained notoriety through advertisements, where it claimed to be a replacement for the infamous Zeus botnet. Zeus was a powerful banking trojan created in 2007 by Evgeny Bokachev, the FBI's most wanted cyber criminal, who has still evaded authorities to this day. Zeus had infected more than 13 million computers, stealing over $100 million. But in late 2010, Alex received the source code and rights to sell Zeus, and incorporated many components of Zeus into SpyEye. SpyEye was primarily developed by Alex, but he was assisted by Hamza Bendelaj, an Algerian national who is 22 and also a computer science graduate. Together on Darkcode, with Alex using the alias Gribo Demon and Hamza using the alias BX1, they would advertise SpyEye with different release packages selling between $1,000 and $10,000. The product lived up to its advertising, with one of their clients raking in over $3 million in just a few months of using SpyEye, where they targeted the banks Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. A new threat had swept the nation, and banks all across America were in a state of panic. More money was being stolen every day, and the FBI was still clueless to what was going on. But there was a glimmer of hope when Lucif Caroni, a senior threat researcher at the security company Trend Micro, began working in conjunction with the FBI. Lucif and his team began targeting the users and developers of SpyEye, trying to uncover the real identities behind the screen names. But month after month passed, and the investigation into SpyEye hadn't led them any closer to Alex and Hamza. But by this point, Hamza was aware that he and Alex had law enforcement after them. On January 21st, 2011, he posted a thread titled, Feds, 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 where he posted part of an online chat where someone was looking for clues about the identities of Demon and BX1. In that thread, Hamza urged other members to double encrypt their computer hard drives and to make contact with a good lawyer. Most of them simply dismissed Hamza as being paranoid. But in February 2011, the investigation into SpyEye caught its first break when agents seized and searched a SpyEye server in Atlanta that Hamza operated remotely from his home in Algeria. That server controlled hundreds of computers infected with SpyEye. And a few months later, on July 6, an online customer sent a message to Alex, expressing interest in purchasing SpyEye. Alex and the customer negotiated for a bit, and finalized the sale at $8,500 for SpyEye and some add-ons. The customer transferred the money to Alex's account at Liberty Reserve, an online transaction processor that was based in Costa Rica. Alex then uploaded the SpyEye program to SendSpace.com. But what Alex didn't know was that this was far from a typical sale. The customer he just sold SpyEye to was an undercover FBI agent. 
After the purchase, authorities were finally able to understand how SpyEye operated by reverse engineering it. The operation started with Hamza sending over 1 million emails infected with SpyEye to users in the United States. After infecting their targets, SpyEye was used to form a botnet. A botnet is a network of computers infected by malware that are under control by an attacker. Bots are typically stealthy programs that run as hidden processes on the computer. Once installed, SpyEye takes control of a victim's machine and transfers data back to the command server. SpyEye had four main components. The first is the builder, which is used to generate a bot. When the code is compiled, an executable is generated, but this is done in a way that hides the code to avoid any detection. The second component is the admin panel, which controls admin operations of the bot. The third is the form grabber, which records account credentials from web forms used in online banking transactions. It also has a built-in capability to take screenshots of every keystroke on the victim's machine. Lastly, there is a backend collector, the database component of SpyEye. SpyEye was wildly successful for Alex and Hamza, and they continuously worked to keep the product operating. They updated SpyEye over 80 times to overcome new security patches, but Hamza's operational security was not as good as his programming was. Over a period of several years, he left clues online that Trend Micro in the FBI would use to narrow down their suspect list. After SpyEye was purchased by the FBI, Configuration files were decoded, where they found his dark code username, as well as an email address and login credentials for Vertest, a detection testing service used by cybercriminals. Hamza became more paranoid and decided to lay low after posting an urgent thread to dark code, where he said, FBI are after some members. I spoke today with a friend working on FBI. He said there is an operation to find some hackers. We spoke deeply, and he mentioned dark code. So guys, please be careful. Hamza disappeared from operations after that, and over one year later, had decided the case had cooled down enough to start living life normally again. In January of 2013, he traveled with his family from Malaysia to Egypt with a layover in Thailand. But little did Hamza know that the feds had exposed his identity and were still tracking him. Thai police working in conjunction with U.S. authorities arrested Hamza in the airport, where he quickly became known as the Smiling Hacker when he was seen beaming in the photos of his arrest. News of Hamza's arrest, as well as his identification as BX1 by prosecutors, swept through hacker forums like wildfire. Alex was still at large, but he wasn't sure whether authorities had identified him or not. But through the FBI's investigation, they found, early in 2012, that Alex originally told customers to contact him through ICQ, an instant messenger service. But he became sloppy, creating a new email and signing up for a different service that was easily traceable to where he lived in Russia. Even after federal investigators linked Alex to his online alias and found that he was the creator of SpyEye, the evidence and indictment remained under seal so he wouldn't know that he had been identified. Because Russia does not have an extradition agreement with the US, so federal agents had to wait until Alex left the country. Despite the widespread news of Hamza's arrest, and the fact he had been picked up while traveling on vacation, Alex too decided to leave Russia for a trip to the Dominican Republic. But unknown to Alex, the International Criminal Police Organization had already circulated a red notice to other nations about him, the closest thing to an international arrest warrant. So when Alex showed up in the Dominican Republic, he was arrested just six months after Hamza had been arrested. And on January 28, 2014, Alexander Panin pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to nine years and six months in prison. And on June 26, 2015, Hamza Bendelaj pleaded guilty. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. By the time the two had pleaded guilty, the market for Spy Eye had completely evaporated. But many of their clients had gotten away with using SpyEye to steal from banks. They had moved on to other pieces of malware, different toolkits, but ones that experts say are growing increasingly more sophisticated. Alex and Hamza may be gone, but the business they pushed to new heights with the most threatening malware ever developed will continue to grow and grow and grow.